लाइव ओके वंडरफुल हेलो एवरीबॉडी माय नेम इज ईशान एंड वेलकम बैक टू कारवान टुडे वी हैव अ वेरी स्पेशल गेस्ट फॉर आवर टॉकिंग फिल्म सीरीज अभिजीत दत्त ही इज समबडी दैट आई रियली वांटेड टू इनवाइट फॉर अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम एंड फाइनली वी हैव हिम ही इज एन एक्टर थिएटर डायरेक्टर कम्युनिकेशन कंसल्टेंट एंड फिल्म मेकर uh film making i think is the most interesting professions and he uh, is trying to do that in his own right so uh, we'll talk about his career we'll talk about his films we we'll talk about a lot of things that uh revolves around the profession of cinema revolves around the profession of theater uh in india today so thank you so much avijit sir for being part uh, of this conversation absolute pleasure ishan thank you very much for inviting me thank you so much sir so let's start from your uh, beginning of the journey if you can talk about your childhood your parents uh, where did you grow up and um, i believe you studied law and english how did you then come to i got how did you find that out well <laughs> i was um, i i am a true indian so i studied in bombay in calcutta in bangalore and finally finished from hyderabad I had also got a scholarship in Hyderabad uh, from class seven, and uh, despite going away to Bombay for three years, when I came back to Hyderabad, the scholarship continued. Mm-hmm. But uh, at the end of school, I was to study science, and I had in those days we used to have something called the Science Talent Scholarship. and i was a candidate for that but uh, between school and college there was many a slip of cup and lip and i started reading a lot and realized that uh, what i really wanted to do was pursue the arts so i decided to do <clears throat> english honors who would do english honors i mean in those days you would think what would you do with that yeah. when uh, in times when i graduated it was you were an engineer or a doctor or you were something useful and those who weren't took up courses like english and economics even that was considered not as bad as english mm. however uh I enjoyed myself because I could study and read things that broaden my perspective and it fed my brain. It was also when I discovered theatre and uh, besides acting in a few I also sorry wake I'm doing a talk I'll call you back after that. I'm doing a talk I'll call you back after that. Okay, sorry. No, Tell me, sorry. Um, let me just put it on silent. Yeah. So those were also the times when Badal Da Badal Sarkar was in his heydays when he had turned his back on the scripts that he had written, and he was going out to the streets with his third wall theater, which was breaking the third wall. and going out towards the audience i did work with him a bit and uh, i started my own theater group you also very uh, i am very proud of the fact that we dramatized mahashita devi's azad chirasi ki ma and that was the first time that the naxalite movement was examined on stage the play of course got an quite a few awards and was subsequently done by many including as a film uh, by govin nailani and that, that was quite a failure that was uh, what i call a red label brook bond tea 
he didn't have any understanding of the movement. Although uh, Govindji is uh, and has been uh, involved with the left movement, but I don't think the screen, the script got across to him. Marshita Devi herself was very doubtful about whether I would be able to do it. And uh, Shaman and Jalan, uh, who was also a theatre director, Sham and I decided to do it together. And we invited her for the production. You know, the play is really a mother's recounting of how she encounters her son's life. She never even understood why was he killed. So she felt that it was something that was very difficult to be brought to life on stage. But we managed it very successfully and I'm extremely happy for that experience. At the end of the first show, many came backstage to congratulate us, but Mahashita Di didn't come back. So I was a little uh, crestfallen, walked out to find her sitting in the audience quietly by herself, unaccompanied by anybody else. So I went next to her and sat down and the two of us sat in silence. And she said, I was wrong. I said, sorry. She said, I was wrong. I thought that it couldn't be done on stage, but you've done a marvelous job. It was the greatest feeling that one could have. Subsequently, I have also written a few plays. However, after school, I, uh, after college, sorry, after I'd got my BA honors, I went on to do MA. And then while doing Jatra, uh, came across, I was also acting in Jatra and doing lights. Jatra is the folk theater of Bengal. And uh, I came across many uh, stalwarts, one of whom was Mr. Dutt, who's Paul Dutt, uh, who said, what are you doing? So I said, I'm doing MA in English. And he said, then what do you want to do? This has been a question that has always changed my life. What do you want to do? So I said, unfortunately, my grandfather was very keen that I do a law because there are all his books which are there. So he said, why don't you go to the syndicate and present saying that you've allowed with Paul Dutch? I'm certain you can allow me also. So I did do that and the syndicate allowed me. So in my second year of MA, I started doing law and practicing from a solicitor's company. Didn't like that at all. Again, met somebody at a club in Bengal club, uh, Ari Dang, who was the rector of St. Paul's Darjeeling, who said to me that, uh, I said, I don't like your sense of humor or some such cocky remark. Uh, at 23, you, I guess, are pardoned for that. And he said, so what do you do? I said, I work as a lawyer and detest it. So he said, what do you want to do? I said, are you asking a 23-year-old? Oh, I would love to go to the mountains and live there. He said, uh, what are you doing right now? So I said, I'm doing my master's in English and I should be done in the next few months. He said, do you want to join uh, my school? I said, what school? He said, St. Paul's Darjeeling. I'm looking for an English teacher. So I really did go up to Darjeeling with him the next day to take a look. And I, there was a solar eclipse. Of course, very dramatic. And it seemed to symbolize to me that forget it. This is darkness at the break of noon. Go back and don't ever come back here. But they took me up to the house where they said that I might be living if I joined there. And that building was called Dawkins, where Vivian Lay was born. Of course, it just changed my whole viewpoint. And I said, definitely, I would love to come back and work here. So I worked in Darjeeling at St. Paul's. From there, I went to Shillong to start a school called the Sam Rifles Public School. Uh, came back to Calcutta after starting the school, wrote 
the school song, designed the uniform, designed much of the school. And then came back and started doing theater, lights, jatra. I wasn't interested in films at all. Did a film with Satyu uh, where Anil Kapoor did his first role. It was called Kaha Kaha Se Guzar Gya. Um, after that, I just didn't want to do any of the Bollywood films. But then in 95, I uh, did a bunch of five films, which included Fire by Deepa Mehta, Kama Sutra by Meera, two films out of Bengal, uh, Bomb Connection and Bo, Cat Bo Barracks Forever, and a film for an Austrian filmmaker. And I said, well, I told my wife, I've had enough for my this life. Five films, that's more than enough. In 2006 or seven, I can't remember, they chased me for uh, doing a camera test for No One Kill Jessica. Mm. And after that, every year I've been doing two or three films. Films, OTT, etc. Yeah, yeah. No, so uh, we'll, we'll come back to No One Kill Jessica and yeah. now the recent project. But uh, you mentioned Badal Sarkar and I think yes. that was a moment that changed your life completely. Absolutely. Badal da, because Badal da is known for his uh, very provocative very political theater, yes. like Mrinal that was known for his very provo provocative yes. cinema. And both came from the same city of Calcutta, where you also met uh, Badalda. So t tell us about your fir first encounter with Badalda. How did you get to know about him? Uh, did you see any of his play beforehand? You know, uh, he had written uh, Eva Mindriji which I think is Indian theatre's first most modern play. Hmm. Uh, and those lines towards the end, uh, hmm. And then I that he was no star and the star looped in a hyperbole and came down and came down to the ground as dust. Amol, bimol, kamol, ebom, indrajit. Ebom, indrajit. That play, I think, touched the core of most, uh, especially people who were young at that time. I did do a tiny role in it for Shamanan. Then I did the lights for a few of his plays. Um, and somebody took me, I can't remember whether it was Rati Bartholomew or uh, I can't remember who, took me to the Medan to see his play called Goma. This was the first of the plays which Bhagulda did, which was uh, turning its back on the proscenium stage. And after that, we sat and uh, I think for the best part of about two hours, we drank tea out of little uh, mud bars and uh, we chatted about theatre. Subsequently, we also did a few workshops uh, where shockingly, he said to me, I like your ideas. So I, instead of my conducting it, why don't we jointly conduct it? So the first was in Calcutta with a Brazilian dancer, Carmen Pata Nostro. Carmen did one day, I did one day, and Bagulda did one day. And all three of us would be in the workshop for the others, vis-a-vis -vis the day Bagulda was conducting, Carmen and I would be one of the participants and the other way around. That was a remarkable experience. And soon, uh, my repertoire changed. My, my vision started uh, becoming much, much more incisive. Till uh, 87, when I got the Goethe Fellowship to go to Germany, 
by which time I had done some breasts. I had also been a part of putting up the breast festival in Calcutta, uh, which was breast at 80. And unfortunately, the wall was still up. So I couldn't go to the Berlin or somewhere, but breast was very much a part of my theatre education and my state of mind, actually. Sitting at, uh, oh, sorry, then I went back in 94 when, uh, again, I got to go at the fellowship because my first one had to stop after one month and two weeks because my wife was pregnant and not well. So I said to the Germans that I'm sorry, but I have to go back. And this lady said to me, but don't you understand it's so given to only one person in the universe? I said, you know, let's scale it down. It's only in the globe. But they were kind enough to extend it again in 94. By which time there was a sea change. The wall had come down. You were suddenly looking at East Germany that was fighting to come out of the shadows of the Soviet thinking. And uh, the most remarkable experience was I was going to meet the director of Berliner Ensemble, Heiner Müller, the great playwright, who was also known to the world as a leftist playwright. And he had collaborated with uh, two other greats for the opening of the Los Angeles Olympics. So he despite being in East Germany, had an open ticket to move across. People suspected that uh, he must have been close to the ruling party, which is why he was allowed to do it. And the rumours went that he would go to friends' parties and take pictures and send the pictures across to Stasi. So that day I was going to meet Mr. Aina Mueller, on the train, I saw people reading the railway, the, 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 the newspaper, and on the newspaper headline was Aina Mueller. So I asked them what happened. I, I asked this lady who was reading, and she said, Oh, you know, Aina Mueller started questioning because of his connections with Stasi. I never said I was going to meet him. Of course, my meeting was 9.30, I reached there at 9.15. And the secretary said, I'm sorry, yeah, Dad, but uh, yeah, Mula is a little busy. Would you like to come back another day? I can give you appointment after a month. I said, no, I won't be here after a month. So she said, if you'd like to wait, but it'll be a long wait. So I went down and went to the cantina, where famously Brecht used to sit. And I asked them, where did Mr. Brecht used to sit? And this lady pointed out a bench and I sat there at the table. That was in 94, which is after the Babri Masjid had fallen. And everyone, after the what happened in 93 in, the, in Bombay, everyone was asking me, how did it happen in India, which has always been embracing diversity? I couldn't reply, I had no answer. So I, there was this idea which was maturing in my head that what can you do as an actor, theatre director, as a playwright? So I began writing a play sitting there at the cantina of the Berlin Ensemble. The play was called Bombay Bosnia. And it was about ethnic cleansing. Uh, a play that was also done at the NSD festival when uh, the director said to do show kar le i said do show mat karao kyunki pehle show ke baad wo log aa jayenge ise disturb karne he said dekh lete hain i said ek hi din mein karo phir sorry it, it was bajaj mr bajaj who that's right and uh, he said hum dekh lenge so I said, Aap ek hi din mein kar lo, So we did the first show and yes, we had problems, but he shut the gate 
and only let ticket holders come in. Uh, and we did both shows. But the play was banned in Bombay. And he said, you must publicize that. So I said, no. For the, even if I think it's the right thing to do to publicize it, I will not for the wrong reason. And uh, we never did. But we did about eight shows of the play and that was it. Stopped after. The play was about Amin Siani being chased out of his house uh, while the flames licked at their heels, literally. And how in uh, VT, which was then called VT Victoria Terminus, uh, a whippersnapper takes charge of the first class waiting room and he's selling space uh, to lie down six feet by four feet for a certain amount of money. But, etc. Well, I shouldn't bore you with the play, but that was a turning point for me that day. And uh, it did have a voice which was heard. That was in Hindi. And uh, a Bengali writing in Hindi, of course, there were many jokes about it. But I got the grammar corrected by people who were good at it. Subsequently, I wrote quite a few plays, uh, three more plays, actually. I, and the last one was uh, Ki Express Ki City, which was about child abuse. That is the other area that I have been working in. Uh, instrumental, I wouldn't say, but I was there when uh, Child Line was born. And the first time it was advertised was in a film that I made for UNICEF and NHRC. Mr. Kartikeyan was the chief. And I refused to find the master of the film till I got an action point. So Mr. Kartikeyan said, we cannot get an emergency number because MTNL doesn't have any. But sometimes fate conspires. And I got a film to do for MTNL where I met the chairman of MTN and I said that we need an action line for children. And this is what we are thinking of. So he said, I can't give you three numbers, but I can give you four. I was sitting in his office. This is when the new thing called a mobile phone had come into my hand. And I called Mr. Kartike and I said, just a second, I've got good news from the MTNL. Here's the chairman of MTNL. And we got 1084. So there have been good opportunities, which is almost like Murakami's magical realism. Uh, I made a film called Akarbakar. I have the poster here somewhere. Anyways, yeah. Akarbakar was also shown at uh, the Khan Festival. Mm. And uh, we were invited. <clears throat> to show it in Parliament hmm. on the 15th of August. Having shown it, my lead actress in that was Lucian Dupe. She was also there for the showing. And the law minister, Mr. Bhatwaj, called us down to the well. And while looking at her, he asked me, kya chahiye kya? I knew what he wanted. But I thought, you know, Nothing risked, nothing gained. So I said, sir, uh, agar aap winter session mein child bill launch kar sakte hain. See that tk tk ho jayega. So going against the protocol, I banged the table in front and I said, the law minister has just committed to launch the child bill at the next session. And lo and behold, whether it's a coincidence or a commitment kept, also became a reality in the next session. So it's a, it's like what I call magical moments, you know, of being there at the right time in the right place. So I've just been carrying on talking and let's talk about other things more interesting. Than oh, no, these are, these are really interesting things because what your work is all, your work is always very action oriented rather than just sending out spreading messages, whether it's your theater, whether it's your films, uh, not the films that you acted in, but the films that you directed. 
because as I, I, uh, if we can paraphrase from your previous answer that you did, uh, you did films that you acted in just for living, not for any other purposes. You, you would do you consider yourself a reluctant actor, but a theater person and a filmmaker by choice? Um, you know, I started acting really seriously after uh, No One Killed Jessica. Yeah, yeah. So I've been a little hesitant about doing any old story or doing the father for a for a hero. Yeah, I've rather looked at um, roles that make some kind of a difference to the plot, to the film, and most importantly, I I come out of it saying yes. I've done something. So with that in mind, I have been very fortunate in roles coming my way. Yeah. And then I lived in Delhi, not in Bombay. So yeah. whoever was casting me had to go through that additional headache of getting <laughs> me over and putting me up in a hotel and, you know, all that. No, uh, so... Uh... There's also an incident that I read about. You have mentioned about the law minister, uh, Mr. Bharatwaj, yes. but you also was in, were invited by former Prime Minister Vajpayee for a show, for a theatre. Which, which theatre was it? Was it Bombay, Bosnia? I, I am afraid that was not the one, but which no, was it? No, no, no. Uh, that was, I think, Kismat Yachakrans, hmm. which was about the Northeast where uh, this IAS officer gets this brilliant idea that, you know, every 20 years, there's this thing called the bamboo flower that mm. blossoms. Yeah. And when it blossoms, it's a heady time when all loves come together, the drums sound sweeter, the mahua tastes far, far sweeter. All loves come together. And this is also when, like most of nature, the fragrance brings down rats and the rats eat crops down to a stubble. So it happened in Mizoram, actually. This is a historic thing that happened. Hmm. And the IAS officer there, the district magistrate, decided that uh, he would do something very innovative, which was each a rat that was brought, they would be paid for it. So naturally, there was a whole parallel line and industry of dead rats. Rats are being brought, sold back, and again being brought, etc. Uh, that was the play. And uh, I called it Kismat Kya Chakrans. Yeah. So that was the, that was the play that uh, Vajpayee Sahab Maybe yes, like, yes. as slightly now uh, because we are talking about the northeast, it reminds me of the 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 situation in the northeast presently, and uh, I I think uh, we we must ask people who are watching if if they really support the cause to also ask your governments to act on it because it's it's really really saddening whatever happening is money. You know, uh... Ideally, I would say that let's observe two minutes of silence. Yeah. From the complete tragedy that is going on. But silence today is a weapon that is being used by our prime minister. Hmm. They are not talking about it anywhere. <clears throat> he talks of peace in international fora hmm. while death continue, continues to haunt the people of Manipur. It is such a terrible time. And uh, yesterday, a report came out that it is state-sponsored, but for the sake of <clears throat> corporate grabbing of land for petrol, etc. Now, whatever it be, but we do know that the people to blame are the people who are ruling. Yeah. And that is absolutely shocking. And we are completely helpless in looking on while there's complete silence 
from the people who do. Mm. I remember reading that uh, a month ago, I think, the Home Minister visited and my wife and I talked about it saying, oh no, does it mean that there will be even more acrimonious killings? Sure enough, the next day on it started. It is more than shocking. It is unfortunate and we are all helpless. I, yeah. I wonder if I could possibly light a match that could be lighting up flames that could bring about some kind of civil disobedience movement to bring some action. Pregnant women are not getting food. Those who have just delivered don't have clothes. You know, people with just the clothes on their bodies have run out of their homes. Yeah. It's a tragic situation. And we have nothing to say, no help to give. It is really tragic. Yeah. Uh, this, this brings me to a question, actually. Do you think, because Godar said the, the, the angle that you fix your camera is itself a political decision? Same with other scholars and other filmmakers, even Adur mentions, and even Girish Kasarwali for that exam, for, for, for that matter said, uh, no art can be apolitical. There's nothing like being apolitical. Do, do you support that argument? Absolutely. Can we remove politics from art? Is, are those two separate entities? You know, Brecht says a marvelous thing. He says every act in society is political. Hmm. And that is absolutely true. Yeah. Because whether you're for, whether you're against, whatever you're doing is a statement on what your standpoint is. And that is political. Yeah. The whole business of art for art's sake, I don't think went beyond Mr. Walter Benjamin. Uh, it has outlived its purpose. <clears throat> but we also know that art is not a police person. We cannot police, nor can we believe that we can light the flames. But of course, we can wish. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Theatre is something that uh, in India, especially with people like... Uh, uh, you know, Hashmi and others, theatre became a political tool for a very, uh, for, to a certain extent, with Nukkar Nataks become part of the uh, sociocultural uh, fabric of uh, what, what we call, quote-unquote, entertainment, street entertainment, but with that also providing a good lesson for the society. You, When you write theatre, do you also keep that in mind that it should also leave an impression on the mind of the people that they go back and think about it, uh, maybe ponder upon it and then act on it. Definitely. But I must give you an experience of our experience, share our experience with Nukkar mm -hmm. Um uh, In 95, when the Rath was coming, you knew that the Pandora's box of hatred was being opened. And once it was opened, it would never close down again. Yeah, We were doing a workshop and uh, there was a boy from a minority community who went back in the evening and his brothers had been scalped and their shop, he came from an economically distraught part of society. Uh, their family ran off the shop and the shop was burnt. So we in the group decided to do a play and take the play to the, to the city, raise money and pay him back for it so that he could possibly make the shop again. At about that time, Mr. Baskar Ghosh, who was the secretary INB, mm -hmm. he called uh, 14 theatre directors and I was one of them. Habib Saab, Bansi called MK Raina, uh, Mala Hashmi, etc. And um, said, look, can you do something just to tell people that we are thinking and don't worry, we haven't left your side. 
So we formed committees as any uh, group activity does. And I was in the budget committee with Bansi and Habib Saab. Um, I have great respect for Habib Saab, so don't see it as critical of him. But a week later when we met, nobody had got together, no committee had formed. Uh, sorry, the committee had formed, but the committee never met. Hmm. So I said, Habib Saab, what is the matter? We will not do any budget. He said, you are not going to do anything. I said, it's a lot. So Bhaskar said, uh, so tell me, have you people decided? So Habib Saab said, yes, Bansi, tell me. Bansi said that we have a budget or something like that. Bansi has this wonderful smile when he speaks. And he said, we have a budget for about four and a half hours. So Bhaskar said, Look, we are not asking you to make a film. We just want you to do street theatre. Let me ask people individually. And he asked everybody individually. Habib Sahib said, Mere Muslim hone ke naate raste mein jana thik nahi hai. Mala said, we are busy. Someone else said something. MK said, Abhi ye mujhe zara time lagega tayar hone me. Karte karte mere pe aage aur mein kaha ke hum to tayar hai ji. So we were the only ones who were ready then. They gave us police protection wherever we performed. We did 27 shows and we did shows where yesterday Mr. Advani had entered Delhi from that area and we would go and do a show there. But the difference was, uh, Sabda's experience had taught us, we would get there. I had a car at that time, which was a, as my friends called it, the first model Mr. Toyota built. It had large seats and one person was assigned to drive that car. And if any problems occurred, the ladies were to go in that car, that driver, assigned driver would be given the keys at the beginning of each show and they were to drive out and we would somehow run out, ensure that we are not killed. We had a very successful run. And at the end of the show, we would take a cloth and go around and people would contribute whatever they wanted. And we were doing a show there. We suddenly saw, I realized while acting that Mr. Bukhari had come down. So Bukhari Sahib show ke baad hame kahe ki, Guzari Shai ki aap hamare saath aake, so we said, uh, sorry, we have already been committed. You know, this boy who we were doing the play for, his sister-in-law was living there. That was her, uh, her Maikya. And we went to her Maikya to eat. But while I was talking to Mr. Bukhari, uh, the boys came to me and he said, sir, Dad, we have a problem. I said, what's the problem? He said, you know, while we were going around, the beggars of Jama Masjid have all collected together and they collected money. Now they want to give us. So I said, so? I said, can we take it? Now these are our bourgeois, bourgeois problems. So I said, of course we will take it if they're giving it. The play ended on Ek Muti Raak. Mm -hmm. That we are all being exploited for just for Ek Muti Raak. And uh, you won't believe it. On the roads, everybody felt that. Like this policeman in Karolbag said to me, Sir, you better best idea. Hai. Now, unfortunately, since 95 and now 23, um, we have had that high water mark of 2014. Yeah. Ever since, suddenly, we have found that the split is being exploited even more. And hatred is taught every day. Uh, that you can go out and say, it's called Maro, it's called Tango. Not that you gain anything out of it. It's not that they are getting gas at 500 and the others are getting gas at 1100. Yeah. The lies continue and the preaching of hatred continues. 
yeah yeah uh you also as you mentioned unif you you have you worked for unicef in a project yes. and that became a very important thing uh, internationally so if you can talk about how you got into conversation with unicef how did this collaboration uh, right. took place and this is a later uh, yeah part of it like it's it's the 2000s that we are talking about so we are jumping yes. from ayodhya because i think uh, there is a situation after there was such um, horrifying uh, yes. and i think because i i come from kanpur which is next to which is very near right. to faizabad right. ayodhya and um, that period of time i think is still very fresh in people's mind but they have now chosen to support those who were maybe in part responsible yeah, yeah. for yeah. the problem yes. and uh, you know um, i was presenting to unicef on safe motherhood yeah yeah it was an advertising campaign and the dialogue continued to turning around to talking about equal opportunity being and not being given to girls yeah which resulted in my doing a series of films for unicef which kind of became seminal which was uh, for the sake of the girl child you know the meena project had already occurred which was about equal opportunity in education for girl child for the girl child so there was a quote of ours which was actually used in mr sen amartya sen's book which was that for 75 years barmer didn't have a marriage because no girls were there in barmer i'm very happy to note that that has changed and now marriages have occurred yeah but this resulted in a series of films on the meena project and the state of the girl child which kind of pushed me towards doing my own film of akkar bakkar but we did a series of films on it and then we were doing a film in uh, shooting another part of this docu series in orissa and we had to travel to bihar mm. or rather it was the other way around we were shooting in bihar and we had to go to orissa mm. and there were three girls in the unit so i asked unicef that could the girls please be flown because uh, elections in bihar is not a great time at that time it wasn't at all so rather than going by train which is what we had budgeted for it they could be flown uh you know they hummed and hawed and finally said you know to get this additional 28000 rupees we'll have to spend 20000 dollars in getting everyone together for the meeting and that was my breaking point when i said that it's not a great point working for these people and after that i never did anything with him itself that was my last mm. but i did finish those films and they are considered to be uh, important statements yeah. and i believe it's there in wherever and then you in india you did uh, the jago grahak campaign uh, for yes. the government oh, yes uh, when you were very young uh, we used to see it on tv uh, and right. it was a beautiful tune uh, <laughs> in the you end know, uh, i was heading an advertising agency and my account executive came and said sir uh, you got a huge campaign this was 2001 uh, i said really what's the campaign said uh, for the ministry of consumer affairs so i said kya campaign karna hai wo to bata hi said ki wo tyohar mein jab mithai wagaire khareedte hain wo dibbe ke sath wazan karte hain to aap keh lijiye ki ye ye dekho ye galat hai dibbe ka wazan alag karna chahiye rang istemal karte hain wo theek nahi hai wo rang bole ke khane mein rang nahi hona chahiye so i did a series of nine ads uh, three different campaigns we went to the secretary i think she was called priya singh hmm. and we presented the first campaign and she said correct very good i said you really like it she said very much so i told the ads and i put it down and i showed her the next three 
She said, I agree with you. This is even better. I said, you really like it? She said, yes. <laughs> Tore it. Then I took up the next three ads. She said, why are you wasting my time? I said, because you are wasting the country's money. You are spending five crores and doing this campaign, which is not going to get anything. Yeah. But if you really want to do consumer awareness, then you should be spending 200 crores. So she said, where is that money going to come from? I said, let's go to the planning commission, get permission from your minister, and we'll go and present to the planning commission. Uh, Mr. Montek Singh Aluwalia was the chief then. And we went and presented. And we came out of that meeting after one and a half hours with the first tranche check. And subsequently went on to get 200 crores. And the campaign was Jago Grad Jago. As simple as that. So, ab jab hum ek gaon mein jate hain aur dekhte hain ki char paanch ladkiyan gayi hain dukaan mein shampoo ke sachet lene aur wo dekhte hain shampoo ke sachet aur phir wo ek dusre ko kehte hain ki hey, tu bol na tu bol na to ladki kehti hai ha ji ye purane expire ho gaye shampoo kahe de rahe hain aap mujhe and they throw it down on the shop and i say wow beta bahut so these are little moments of joy and victory that one is able to save us. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, those are, those are iconic uh, ads that we... And, you know, uh, yeah. subsequently, Prasoon's agency, uh, McCann Erickson, got the account and they changed the line. Hmm, yes. Maza nahi aaya. Mujhe to bilkul hi nahi aaya. Yeah. Usal baad phir wapas aagaya to jago grahak jago. Abhi tak wohi chal raha hai. So who, who decided this Jago Grahak Jago tagline? It was my agency that did it. Hmm. And uh, thankfully, Mr. Sharath Pawar was then Minister of uh, Agriculture and Food and Consumer Affairs. And Priya Singh was the secretary. Wo maan gaya. Hum jo kehte te maan jate te. So hum, uh, radio mein we did a serial, which was, I think... Uh, 21 episodes long about this young girl who was a, a, an activist. Then we did television ads and of course a lot of press. It actually reached out. It really felt that it uh, did something. Your, your intervention in the rural area is also not limited to this ad campaign, but also you, you have two patents uh, to your name. Exactly. One being on 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 toilet. So yeah. why don't you talk about that and how that ruler uh, experience helped you? Um, just, I was uh, president marketing of mobiles. And uh, as a result, innovation was something I learned. Uh, so, if you thought that what happens in the time of a disaster, you don't have electricity to charge your phone. So, what do you do? So, I said, can we think about battery with a phone? So, you really made a battery with a phone and so on. But what that experience taught me was that uh, most often you don't have to stop saying, why don't you try it? So when I uh, left, saying I am going to start my CSR company, and I started the Naval Advisory, and uh, the first thing we did was, you know, I was traveling. Uh, I went with Sunil Das on a long journey, um, hands across the borders, across South Asia. So in the night one day, Datsa said to me, "Yad Bangali, dek." They will sit down and carry on with their job. So I had always wanted to create a toilet for women. So I made something called Dignity, which was uh, a toilet which was large enough that the women could come and use. But how do, you, how do you lock it so that only a woman could use it? So we went to UIDAI hmm. and asked them that, will you help us? And they said, sure. 
because for them it meant they could expand their universe of users and they could demonstrate the usability of other. So people had to go and put their last four digits of the other number. Yeah. It would go up to the other cloud. Approval comes and the solenoid opens. But a man could do it also because yeah. he would get his wife's number. So then we had to figure out some way. Thanks so much. Some way of finding a solution that could be beyond the husband, beyond the panchayat. So we went and uh, created something interesting. Yeah. We did it through, you know, because thumbprint doesn't work everywhere. Uh, our research said that women who made 70, 80 chapatis a day, that flower in the ridges of their fingers. So it became flat. So what do you do? So we would use the camera and the iris does not change from birth to death. And just that retinal scanner and that would allow them to access the other cloud, the message would come down and open. Now, okay, so far so good. But what do you do about an area that doesn't have water? Wait, Sahaf kaise karoge? Microsoft tied up with somebody and they built a toilet that every 20 minutes water would be swirling around and cleaning it. But it ni pani up wasted agar karoge, then you're guilty. So we discovered then that there was something called a certain form of bacteria which was discovered by DRDO in Antarctica and they wanted to use it for Siachen. Siachen, every day the men are crapping and what happens to the crap? It becomes hard ice. So they had to get rid of it. So they used this bacteria. But you know, you can create huge infrastructure, but it gets stopped at a single point. Here, the stoppage was that there was a bend in the pipe. So things weren't going down. And they never used a heater at that point. I suggested that be used, and I got myself free access to DRDO bacteria. So now that is working up in uh, Siachen, the toilets. And I got to use these bacteria in the toilets that I built. How do you transport the bacteria? Remarkable. Take cow dung, put it in, and they feed off the cow dung. So what happens is the bacteria eats all the solid components, leaving behind water, that can be used for irrigation. In Rajasthan, unfortunately, I couldn't build it finally. I wanted to build it so the water would go through rushes, get purified, and it could be used for washing hands also. But gradually, when Mr. Modi came along, and he wanted to do something interesting. I said, Kya baat hai? let's get on to it and start building toilets. Of course, Aadhaar became the bad word at that time. If you remember at the beginning of 2014. And uh, so my partnership was just thrown out of the window. And then the government came in with a stricture saying that no private party can join in with Aadhaar. So I said, now what do I do? So I said, I'll carry on building the toilets with the bacteria, especially in the girls' schools and colleges. So we built toilets all over North India, which is even today servicing over 40,000 girl children, girl students. But this toilet ki bare mein baat karte karte, mere sapne bhi toilets ke hone lage. So I said, oh, good, so, bhai, 
So then I discovered that big data in healthcare did not exist. I'm a diabetic. I'm Suntayaki. India has 12% diabetic. Koi or get the 22%, koi get the 40%. Are bhai kisko pata hai kyunki testing to hoti nahi hai. So I figured out this method of testing where one instrument did 18 different parameter testing. Wow. <laughs> Motorcycle pe do lerke nikal jate. Test karke sare reports up on the cloud. And when a villager wants to go to a specialist, kya hota hai, wo jab shahar mein aate hai, to doctor bagayar chehra uthaye, lik dete waha pe 24 test kara ke lao. De dete hai, out of these 24 tests, believe you and me, at least 18 are what is called sink tests. That is, it is just thrown in the sink. That's it. Rubbish. But they are charged for it. Now what happens is, I'm sorry. What happens now is that they are suddenly aware, they have these reports with them and say, Dr. Saab, ye hai hamare paas. Badal jata hai. So that is also something we have done and with Honda, we have done over uh, 70,000 with video, uh, sorry, Vodafone we have done, uh, etc. So we have done something with the pandemic, we had to close shop. Yeah. Now coming back to from your uh, innovation and your, uh, I would call it social work. Uh, because uh, this is something that might have a long-lasting impact on a lot of people, which is not recognized now, but in the long run, this is going to benefit even the, even the governments uh, who will be I hope so. uh, taking over and uh, after, hopefully, after this <laughs> government. So, <laughs> we'll go back to your uh, initial days and uh, you were also one of the first uh, crew members of the first production of Charan Das Chor, which has now become the epitome of modern Indian theatre. Uh, and how was that experience? How was, because you have also mentioned that you really uh, like uh, Habib Tanvir and you had pretty many encounters later yes, on. Yes. How was your first encounter with Habib? Me, Habib Saab's Charan Das Chor was already done by the time I met him. I was in Calcutta then and he asked me to bring a great doyen, Shombu Mitra, to see the production. That's how, sorry, ouch. Hello? Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yes, sorry. So that's how I met Shombu Da and we became dear friends. But... I designed the lights for Charandas Cho. And it went to the London Festival after that. And it was my design that was used. So minimal uh, work I have done with it. But I'm very proud to have been associated with it. But I guess having been around for so long, there are many occasions when you played some role in something that's important also. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and and I, I think because I I love theater. I, it's it's just now I'm I'm 23. The time that you started your career, so it is now that I've started watching some of these theater and lighting does play a big role in the whole production. And that you did with Charan Dasur, I think uh, it's it's not continued till now. They have new uh, light production and other set productions. But how do you think lighting plays a big role in, in a production? Because uh, dialogue is one thing, acting is one thing, but these other productions, how do they play a role? You know, uh, we came out of group theatre in Calcutta, where today you could be doing the lead role in the play and tomorrow you could just be hammering in the sets. So here I there was one thing that we were paying a lot of money for, the light designer. 
So I tried to pick up light designing and uh, then realized it was very gratifying because Jatra hired me and I made more money in Jatra than I did anywhere else at that time. Um, he asked me how much did I want to charge for designing. I said, I gave 50,000 and lo and behold, he gave me So actually what it does is it holds up moments and you could use lights in a very subtle, sophisticated way uh, where it brings about various changes in the production uh, without the audience being obviously aware of it. On the other hand, I mean, I'll put it in a comic way, it also does something which holds up a production with a lot of flash. For instance, doing Jatra in a village and the first appearance of Krishna. It's a play called Krishna Putra Shambo. Shamba was the son of Krishna who finally had leprosy and the uh, Konark temple was built in honor of him. Yeah. But Krishna's appearance, I had a little flash bomb. So there would be smoke and through the smoke we pick up Krishna and in his hand was a battery light. He would hold up his hand and there would be a light coming out. It was a splendid moment, but it's all theater is, you know, it stands on various risks. Yeah. The biggest risks are the bloody human actors. This guy came a moment too soon. So he was standing on the bomb when I put the bomb on. I switched it on and I heard a loud sound saying, Oh, ma! So the god saying, oh ma, and lifting his leg, the smoke went off, the lights came on, and this man was hurt. He was hurt badly by, by the little shock. But in subsequent shows, it was a moment to behold. Because the audience would gasp and they would applaud that suddenly Krishna appeared out of the smoke. And from his hand came this ray of light. And so on. So lighting was something that made me understand the form also better. Hmm. And I think that went a long way towards defining my passage in theatre. Yeah. And theatre and cinema, are, though they're connected to each other, but they're very different forms. One is a life where Absolutely. every each and every fallacy of an actor is vis visible to the audience and they... You yeah. walk out of the theater on your yes. face, and you can you have to still keep the show on. Correct. Correct. Other is as a film which is produced, I think five months uh, earlier. Yes. yes. Later, but literature plays a important part in both uh, the media. Yeah. Media. Yeah. Uh, so how how do you think this adapt literary adaptation has become uh, a very rare thing now? But in the eighties, in the nineties, when you were probably very young working yes. at that time literary adaptations were, were the were the most common thing absolutely so how did that because you also uh, adapted Maswita Devi's work. yes yes how was that experience because she loved it but there were other adaptations which are very bad yes true true um, you know they are two completely different media you have to yeah. understand that. When you get that understanding and you operate from that level, I think it makes things very clear to you. So, when we would take up, say, a Shekhov and be doing it, no, let me, let me give a, a better experience, a better example. Uh, we were doing a play by this lady who was... Uh, an IAS bureaucrat in Bangalore. We were doing it for the India Arts Festival in Russia. Hmm. And it was like taking coal to Newcastle. The play was called Pushkin's Last Poem. We performed in St. Petersburg. And it was talking about how Pushkin's wife fell in love with the Tsar. And the Tsar finally got somebody to have a duel with Pushkin and that's how Pushkin died. 
and the play was about that now she had written a play which was not to be acted but to be read so it was a huge play it had already been directed by somebody and uh, it was a mess it was yeah. terribly boring yeah and i think running time was close to 3 and a half hours so i said look will you give me i will direct it on one condition she said yes i said you must give me complete freedom so she hated me for it but she had given it i cut it down to a 50 minute play from 3 and a half hours and it worked like a cracker at st petersburg we got a 12 minute standing ovation 12 minutes by the watch you wow. wouldn't believe it people would go into the wings i had also done a small role in it so i was on stage and they would be asking me from the other wing what do we do now and say we go back on so we'd come back on because in the european tradition of theater the audience will applaud and till the applause lasts you have to keep coming back on stage so we made six reentries and the applause continued it was remarkable wow wow so that's uh, but you you have done it fairly successfully how do you think others lack where do they lack in adapting uh, literary works for example like uh, adur gopalakrishnan adopts a, a lot of uh, films mukha mukham being one swayamvaram right. the other uh, and and girish karnat uh, used bhairappa's works uh, who was a kannada yes. writer yes. shyam babu adapted a lot of works and you mentioned govind nihalani uh, so where do they like if they lack and what do you think is the difference between you and them in terms of the approach okay. you know i uh, i would be frightened to compare myself with these great stalwarts but uh shambhu has become far too uh, wordy hmm. so it becomes like a radio play you know it, it's not a film anymore hmm. but where the success of it lies in other people's work i would think is because they have understood that this is another medium and this is how this i mean do you say he raised the cup and had a sip no you don't if the cup missed his lips and went and hit his forehead that makes for an interesting scene yeah but if he raised it and he had a sip of it so big deal yeah i think that is the essence of the problem that uh, you start getting too literal and also my advantage has really been that i studied literature so i had the additional advantage and i used that advantage uh, as i grew i hope <laughs> no you you definitely did uh, now now we'll come to the part where uh, i'll ask you about people that you have met in in life and if you want to talk about them uh, who we have already talked about uh, badulda and uh, habib tanveer i i'll i'll give you a bad one yeah satyajit ray was casting for a film gore bai de and i so wanted to do something with him but i didn't know how to go about getting it so i decided i would call him i called him and he picked it up yes and i said sir uh, i wanted to come and meet you So he said, "All right, come tomorrow at eleven o'clock." I was there at eleven, and he opened the door. Oh, darn! What do I do now? Thank God! Before I left, I had taken a copy of a book that he had written. Our films, their films. I went in, and there was Gautam, Gautam Ghosh, who was making a film on Ray at that time. and he looks up from the trolley and he says hey tiki coach uh, what are you doing here so i said oh uh, well i i just came to get a signature from mr ray and i got a signature and walked out <laughs> so it happens to the best of us i'll tell you another high point shombu mitra the great actor 
Yeah. He rang me up at St. Paul's where I was teaching and he said, Obiji, I must say it in Bengali and I'll translate. To my Kolkata asked, you will have to come to Calcutta. I said, uh, you know, Shambhuda, right now I'm in the middle of the... He said, no, you have to come by day after. I said, well, if Shambhuda calls and he refuses to take no for an answer, I'll have to. So I came. And uh, we used to do this. I would go and stop below his house and I would blow my horn once and he would come down. <coughs> So I rang him up and I said, Shambhuda, I've arrived. He said, um, see you tomorrow morning at six o'clock. I said, six in the morning? He said, yes. I said, the man has gone mad finally. Anyways, I went and at exactly six, I was there downstairs and I beeped. And I waited. Sure enough, he came with his dhoti and his kurta. And he came and sat down in the car and he said, drive to the Academy of Fine Arts through Theatre Road. So I said, all right. I was wondering, what is it that he wants to do? So I started driving up Theatre Road. When I crossed Villa Planetarium, is St. Paul's Cathedral. And all along the road, there was a line of people. And... Uh, there were tea sellers selling tea. This is at 6.15 in the morning. So he said, stop here, stop here. So I stopped. He said, you see this line? I said, yes. He said, this is why I called you. I still don't understand. He said, they have lined up to buy tickets for my play. Have you ever seen this in theatre? No. This is a moment. I get a hair raise when I'm talking about it. I used to, earlier when I would relate it, I would weep. Because this was really a moment. An old actor telling a young actor that this is theatre. And never will you see it again. Because in theatre, people would be calling to say, Hey, get me a ticket, yaar. Get me in. Hey, I'm going out and I'm going to come out. This person is not coming. And so on. Yeah. What an experience. And that was the last play he did. He played Galileo. And fantastic performance, of course. And the man had minus 19 in one eye. He was blind as a bat. And he would count his steps to the platform. And so on. But well, great experience. Thank you ever so much. It's been uh, remarkable. I mean... Recounting so much of my past, I'm almost reliving it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Avijita. And uh, uh, do you also have you also met Kumar Roy when you were in Calcutta? Because he was also part of theatre. You know, I met him, but we didn't have any uh, sizable interaction. Mm -hmm. But uh, in films, I did meet Uttam Kumar. Yeah, uh, he was. The great Uttam Kumar. And I used to know his daughter. So uh, that's how I got to know him. You, you mentioned of uh, Satyajit Ray. And yeah. it reminded me because we have hosted a lot of filmmakers uh, earlier on this platform. And right. all of them have mentioned Pathir Panchali being their inspiration. Absolutely. Do you remember watching uh, the film for the first time? How was that experience of watching Parthir Panchali? I was very young. And uh, I thought it was very dark. And I thought, uh, so much of poverty I see everywhere. Uh, this is a young boy. Huh? Why do I need to see it on screen? Till Opu and Durga go out and see the train going. That changed my experience of that film. And from there on, I remember the experience of experiencing that film. And when he comes back with the gifts for Durga, 
and Vijaya opens her mouth and the, 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 the Surbaha takes over. Uh, sorry, not the Surbaha, but the, uh, oh, down, what was the instrument? Sorry, not violin. Uh, instead of her voice, it was dramatic, absolutely. Many years later, I got to know Shubhrata Mitra very well. We also play the sitar, and uh, he and I both followed Ustad Vilayat Khan. I found that man to be absolutely brilliant. And I, I have no hesitation in saying that the films that were shot by Shubhrata Da were far better than anything Mr. Ray ever shot. Yeah. And but, now, now let's let's also come to Ritwik Ghatak, who is not that celebrated now, unfortunately. Right. But uh, did you also watch at this time when you were young? Yes. Shubhanarekha or Meghe Dhaka Tara, yes. which is part of the... Shubhanarekha was later. Meghe yeah. Dhaka Tara was earlier. Bari Theke Paliya was the first one I saw. But I must tell you an amusing story about Ritwik Ghatak. Uh, I have met him. Um, but this is a story that is, I think, in uh, Mari Seton's book on Ray. Uh, Truffaut came to Bengal. And he was going to meet Ghatak. So he got to the taxi and he said, I need to go to uh, this house here in the Toligan and... Uh, the taxi driver looked at the address and he said, ah, I'll take you. The taxi driver kept looking at this gentleman in the rear view mirror. And then he said, uh, I did not like your last metro. You first started saying, what is this? A taxi driver who is talking about my film? So he said, can we stop for a moment? The driver stopped. He said, can you come to the back seat? Uh, so the driver came to the back seat. And he said, what films of mine have you seen? So he recited eight films that he had seen. And then uh, he said, Mr. Truffaut, you're going to see Mr. Katak. But I'm sorry, he will not meet you. So Mr. Truffaut said, no, no, I have an appointment with Mr. Katak. He said, no, you have no bottle in your hand. I don't see a bottle. Without that, he will not meet you. True to this man, the taxi driver dropped him, <clears throat> but he didn't go away. And Trufo went and knocked on the door. <laughs> the voice from inside said, who is there? And the voice said, uh, and he said, hey, this is Francois Trufo from uh, Paris. Then have you got a bottle for me? He said, a bottle? Then go away. Bring a bottle, we will talk. Trufo came out and the taxi driver was still waiting. He got in and he went. Cut to, my wife and I were in a cab last year. And uh, this guy was very good, the driver. So I said, look, can you come tomorrow? He said, nah, sir, I can't come. I said, hey, this is business for you. Why can't you come tomorrow? He said, tomorrow I have uh, sadhana. I've given up my sadhana today for business. I can't give it up two days. That is an ephemeral quality, which is going away. And I wish I could hold it on. Thank you very much, Jan. I <clears throat> very, very grateful. I never believed that it would take so much time. It's amazing. It's been an hour and a half. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, sir. And if you would like to uh, say a few lines about Talking Film Series, how was your experience? You know, uh, I have often had such episodes, encounters, but rarely have I ever had a chance of having somebody there who has done so much of research and is so educated on my background. This is absolutely remarkable. And I wish you all the very best and more and more strength to your arm. 
take mm. good care and all the very best to Karwar and to you. Thank take you. Care. Thank you so much, sir. And I look forward to meeting you in Delhi someday. Yes, yes. Thank you, Shan. All the very